Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to cover how to add images to your app and it's pretty simple. Um, there's two main ways to do it. One is to use an image asset uh, or a URL of an image. So in this video we're going to first uh, import an actual image asset like a file, like a JPEG file to our app and we're going to include it um, in our PubSpec YAML file and then we're going to implement it. Uh, later we're going to pull the image from a URL. So this should be pretty simple, um, but we're going to cover some things you probably don't know about yet, like constraints and how to lay out the image. So um, in the last video, we covered layout. Um, let's just uh, kind of cover what we're review, what we're going to go over um, and implement in the whole video series. So it's this detail page with the nice banner image at the top and some text sections. So what we've done is we've laid the groundwork for the text sessions. Um, we, it just shows some lines, which we will implement in the next video with the text and um, all the formatting. But for now, uh, let's add an image to the top and keep it simple. So to add an image, uh, uh, we're going to be uh, basically going through the blog post for this video. So if you want to look at the notes, um, I will be showing the notes as we go along so you can read along. Uh, we're going to create a new uh, directory called assets images. So assets is anything like font files, images, um, any anything of that sort, and they're all going to be in one directory. So that's how we're going to organize things. And we're going to use JPEGs. Um, and yeah, that's it. So you can follow along if you want to check out um, this branch of the code, uh, or you can code from step two on your own. So what I'm going to do is off to the side here, I have an Im image already that I'm going to copy. And the image I'm going to copy, if you check out uh, step three of the code, um, anything from step three onward has this image. So I'm just going to copy it here. And it's off screen here, you're not going to see it. Um, but I'm going to copy it to the following directory. So in my code here, I have my main root directory. So I'm going to hit this button at the top, a uh, new folder, and I'm going to create a new folder in the root of the project called assets. Oops, let me move it the root uh, here. So assets is going to be alongside the Android directory and the iOS directory. And then I'm going to create a new folder called images. And we'll have other folders there later. And then um, off in the video, I'm going to, um, in another screen here, I'm just copying the actual um, uh, actual image file. So I'm getting it from my code uh, on branch on the branch that I have at the repo. The, the link to the repo is here um, in the blog post. Um, and it's in step three. So I've already copied it. And let me show you the fact that it is copied. So since this is a tourism app, um, it's going to be of all Japanese locations. Uh, just I just decided to pick that randomly. So this is a location in Japan, and this is the image file. So um, later we're going to load it from a server. So now that I have my images there, I can't just use it straight away. I have to um, go into my PubSpec YAML file, and let me hide the code here. And so the PubSec YAML file is like a configuration for your project. Um, it's in the root of the project. Uh, you can see the file name there. And you get to list like what uh, packages you're going to use and all of that. We haven't added any packages yet. We will get to that in another video. But if you uh, scroll down here, you'll see that there's some example uh, configurations you can enable. So. Um, in Dart, to comment something out, uh, they use this uh, um, pound symbol, right? This number symbol here. So if you just comment it out, you'll actually be able to use that config. And so the important part is to um, configure this correctly so that it'll work, or else uh, if the formatting is messed up, um, it may not work. So what we're going to do is say, it, it, it says here in the uh, description, to add assets to your application, add an assets section. So we have to have this line here, and it has to be indented properly. So the parent of this is Flutter, and then Assets is here. So it's indented by, um, it's indented here, so like that. You can't do this, it has to be like this. And then um, we're not going to include specific images. We're going to just include the entire directory. So we're going to say, um, for all the assets we're using, 
um, we're going to say what the path to the actual uh, um, images directory is. And, and that is assets slash images. And then make sure to include the slash at the end. That way, um, Flutter knows that you can include uh, all the images there. So it's going to look like this. This is the blog post. You can see the notes. We're going to want it looking like this. Another gotcha is you want to make sure that this is indented as well. So the actual directive here is indented properly. So we're going to save that. Um, and then let's implement the actual image. So uh, let's see, we have the code here. Um, so last time uh, we have our we had our location detail screen. So this location detail screen had just three text sections. We're going to fill that out in the next video. But what we're going to want to do is add an actual um, image banner at the top of the screen. So it's going to be one of our children of our column. So let's add that now. Um, let me look at what we want to do here. So um, because we want this to be its own widget, we're going to uh, create a new widget the same way we like we created the text section widget. So I'm going to call this new widget image banner. So this is an Im a widget we're going to create in just a second. And um, before we even implement it, we're going to just code what how we want to um, uh, customize it. So what do we want to pass in uh, to the instantiation of this uh, widget, which is only basically the file name. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say uh, include the path to the image. So we're going to say assets slash images slash and then the name of the file. It's kind of weird because it's Japanese, of course. So uh, if you don't speak Japanese, uh, it'll look weird to you. But that's the name of the file. That's the name. That's going to be the name of our location when um, uh, we show the text uh, corresponding text with that image. And note that later we're going to change this app to be dynamic. So we're not going to hard code the image. We're going to pull it from a web service API, right? Um, for now, we're just going to hard code it to just get it to work. So next, we're going to include the widget that we haven't even implemented yet. And I'm just doing this for uh, brevity here. So I'm going to say image underscore banner. So that's going to be the name of the file we're about to create. Remember that uh, in Dart, uh, if you don't know already, the, the, the import should be in alphabetical order. So um, uh, I'm going to make sure that this is before this. And that it's underlined red because we haven't created it yet. So let's create it now. We're going to go into our location detail folder here. And because this widget is only going to be used by location detail, uh, we're not going to have it live anywhere else. It's a widget that's local to location detail. If it was shared across the app, we would put it in a separate place. So let's call the, um, let's name the file the same name of the widget, image underscore banner, and make sure it's all lowercase. And then since this is a uh, stateless widget, uh, and we're going to implement it much like we did the text section widget we did in the last video. So I'm just going to copy this code here just as a template. And note that Visual Studio Code also gives you some options. And there's extensions to kind of use a hotkey to auto-generate a stateless widget really quickly. But that's not what we're not going to cover that. That's something more advanced. Um, so let's name it to our image banner. And this is the name of our um, uh, widget here. And what we're not going to want to customize the color, but um, what we're going to do is be able to customize the uh, path to the asset. So we're going to have a private member here. And it's going to be a string called asset path. So it's private, again, because there's an underscore here. Second, we're going to pass in asset path. So this is going to be a uh, uh, positional parameter to our constructor. So that means that when the person wants to use this widget, the first argument they provide to the constructor will be the asset path. And this Dart, I, if you didn't uh, follow this in the last video, um, when we use um, this positional parameter and we use this dot and then the name of our private member, it automatically assigns the value. So uh, really quick, if you didn't see it last time, if we just have something like this, this would be the, the long way of doing it. So this asset path, asset path. So this is kind of the, the long way of doing it, but we can't, we're, this is just better to do it this way. 
So um, let's implement our uh, image banner now. So what we're going to do is we're going to display, use the Flutter widget, um, the image widget, but we're going to wrap it in a container. What that allows us to do is provide some op other options like padding or um, the height and all that. So you're going to want to wrap your images in a container or some other uh, uh, widget like that. Um, so let's get started on that. Uh, so there's going to be, if you look at the screenshot, there's going to be a certain height to the image. So we're going to want to expand the image all the way from um, to the maximum it can go in the container, but we want to still constrain the container of the image to a specific height. And to do that, we're going to use something called constraints, and that's a parameter on the container widget. And um, much like decoration that you know, there's also something called, you know, there's box decoration, but there's also box constraints. And what box constraints does is it lets us provide all these other options for how it the content in that container is constrained. So um, the most common um, named constructor for this is called expand. And what that does is it says, let me expand everything, uh, all the content in my container, as long as the height stays at 200 pixels. So to, to specify the height in Flutter or Dart, we're going to use a double. And a double is a certain data type. You could see it here. That just basically it has a decimal point. That's all. That's all you have to know. Um, so if you, you can say 200 like this, but sometimes uh, the Visual Studio Code will give you a warning. You can also do it like this, but using a decimal, like a proper decimal, even if it's dot zero, is probably better. Um, and that's constraint. So that's we'll see how it uh, works in a second. But constraints is going to say expand all the content until the height is um, 200. Um, we're going to have a decoration, and we're going to give it a decoration of a background color. We've already covered this in the other video, and we're going to just say gray here. Um, the reason why we're giving the container a background color is because later when we load it as a, from a URL, if that URL fails to load the image, we still want to show some kind of placeholder, um, uh, not just white space. So uh, that's just a decision I made. Um, you don't have to do that. So the child now is going to be the uh, image uh, widget. So we just say image. And to use the image widget, uh, we're going to use also a named constructor. And remember, a named constructor is goes like the name of the widget and then dot and then the name of that constructor. So there's, as you can see here, there's different ways to um, uh, name the use that different named uh, constructors you can use. One of them is asset, which we're going to use. There's also file, memory, and network. So we'll use network later, but let's use asset for now. That's basically taking any asset you've specified in your pubspec.yaml file. So um, we can now just provide it the name of the asset path. So we're going to say asset path. And the last thing we want to cover in this video, um, last main thing, is how the image wants to expand and, and behave based on the screen size or the container that it's in. So much like HTML or CSS, um, you can specify how it expands and all that. And the way you do that in Flutter is we use this fit uh, parameter. And we use this um, kind of uh, value called box fit cover. So box fit, like box decoration, box con uh, constraints, uh, Box fit gives you additional options like this. So fit height, fit width, um, cover, fill, contain. You can use these in your free time and click into them and read about them in the documentation. Uh, the documentation will explain how to use these. But in this video, we're just going to use uh, cover. And what cover does is it fills the image all the way as much as it can within the container that it's in. Uh, cool. They have something similar in CSS as well. So let's save this. Um, there's some syntax error. So we're going to make sure that we have the image asset finished here, and then the container finished. And let's see what else. Uh, we didn't, OK. Might go like this. Make sure this is uh, finished. And what else? I need a semicolon here. That's what it was, the semicolon. 
So I'm going to restart it and there we go. The image loads and it's exactly 200 pixels high. And now we can get started on the text of our app. So that was the uh, tutorial here. Um, and if again, if you want to read through the, the blog post, it has all the code and you can read through it in your free time. Um, and yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching.